good evening. If you would, turn to page number two in your hymnals this evening. Good to see each and every one out here at Cornerstone. Let's stand as we turn to page number two. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it, name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me, thou hast brought me to this place. And I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. The God I love hears my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll have our missions letter at this time. Good evening, everyone. We have our missionary letter tonight from the Carpenter Project, uh, which is Brother Rodney and Kathy Fitzsimmons. Uh, it's uh, lots of different updates on various works around the world, so we'll read about each one here. Um, it says, in the Philippines, Bible College graduations. Last month, John was invited to attend three graduation exercises for the Independent Baptist College of Asia Pacific. IBCAP was founded by Pastor Joselito Avila, pictured below, uh, in 2010, and the Carpenters Project has maintained a close partnership since its beginning. Since 2013, IBCAP has awarded 207 bachelor's degrees, and 84% of its graduates are in full-time ministry. This year, the school awarded seven students bachelor's degrees, 15 received Graduate of Theology certificates, a three-year program. Pastor Rob Redland, from Calvary Community Baptist Church from Colorado was the commencement speaker at each graduation. Uh, Philippines, homeless ministry. About 2,000 homeless families find shelter in the Manila North Cemetery. About 4,000 children live there. Most were born inside of the cemetery to parents who also were born there. They are malnourished and by age 12, most are petty thieves or involved in drugs. In 2013, Tim Avila began a ministry teaching reading, math, and the Bible to both children and adults. He and his volunteers teach nearly 200 each year. Many of them have been placed in school, in jobs, and some have been able to leave the streets for apartments. Ivory Coast, church building completed. While in the Ivory Coast in late October, Rodney visited a national missionary, Patrice Siho, who started a church in the town of Nigui in 2015. He was supported through our five-year Timothy project. Missionary Patrice's National Sending Church purchased land for the new work and has donated generously to the construction of their new building. The Carpenters Project has contributed as well, and on November 6th, their first service was held in this new location. Ivory Coast, two new projects. Recently, two of the church plants that we have helped in the Ivory Coast were able to acquire land. One is in the city of, oh boy, Abenguro, led by Anderson Cacao. Abenguro has a population of more than 100,000 and is located in the east, only a short drive from the border of Ghana. The other church is in Yabayao, led by Michael Seri. Yabayao's population is 20,000 and is in the southwest near the city of Sobro. Purchasing land is often a great hurdle in the development of a new work, so we are grateful that the Lord answered the prayer for this need for these two congregations. Pastor Anderson, 
completed the five-year Timothy project while Pastor Michael is in his third year of the program. Both are Ivorian missionaries. Now we would like to help them with the funds needed for a building. The estimate is $15,000 for each structure. Please pray with us and these fellow believers for this need to be met. Final word. <clears throat> Rodney returned from the Ivory Coast on November 8th and plans to depart for Chile in December. At the end of this month and into December, John will be traveling in North Carolina, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Please pray for their safe travel. Thank you for being the Carpenter's friend, and may God bless you, Rodney and John. All right, do we have any updates to our prayer sheet from the floor this evening? Pastor has one. All right, uh, I have the Scrogan family, uh, Daryl, Samantha, and Carter. Um, Daryl has been battling cancer and is now um, close to passing away. Um, as far as we know, there this was a, a former, I believe, student of the academy and family that's been here. Um, and to just basically pray for this, the Scroggum family, uh, as it's a young family dealing with uh, battling cancer. Any other updates from the floor? Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather together this evening on this midweek service that we can come before you and sing our praises unto you, that we can come together and fellowship freely in America. We thank you for those freedoms. We ask you to bless um, the Carpenter Ministry Project, where we just read an update from their ministry. We thank you for the report of the successful church plants and projects and the various fields that they're involved with thankful that we are able to partake and be a small part of their work. Uh, we ask you to be with the Scroggum family as they're uh, dealing with uh, cancer. Um, please allow your will to be done and that you can bring um, someone into their lives that can help direct them uh, to you and grow closer to you through this situation, that your will would be done. We ask your blessing on the song service and the preaching this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that letter, Brian. Uh, if you would turn to page 388, I would be like Jesus. Let's stand once again. This will be our handshaking song this evening. And uh, how many people are still cold? Still, still getting that chill off of you from outside, okay? Uh, it's warmer up here, I'll tell you that. So you want to all come? No, I'm just kidding. I don't think we, we, we might be able to fit everybody up here, I guess, but anyway, page 388, I would be like Jesus. Earthly pleasures vainly call me, I would be like Jesus. Nothing worldly shall enthrall me, I would be like Jesus. Be like Jesus, this my song, in the home and in throng be like jesus all day long i would be like jesus he has broken every fetter i would be like jesus that my soul may serve him better i would be like jesus be like jesus my song in the home and in the throng be like Jesus all day long I would be like Jesus let's take time to greet each other with a handshake this evening
page 388 in your hymnals there on that last verse, verse number four. Page 388 there. That in heaven we may meet him, I would be like Jesus. That his words well done may greet me, I would be like Jesus. Be like Jesus this my song, in the home and in the throng. Be like Jesus all day long. And you may be seated, and at this time we'll have Pastor come and bring some announcements uh, for the upcoming week. All right, well, good evening. Welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church, and we're so glad to see each and every one of you. And uh, we do have some visitors with us. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And we do have some announcements to share with you. Um, the marriage retreat sign-up sheet is in the lobby, and it's coming up very, very soon, February. Can you believe it's already almost December 1st, right? It's almost December 1st, yet yeah, tomorrow. And so how many of you have got the, I uh, already know the Mosers do, but you got your Christmas decorations broken out. Okay, you got those out? Yeah, well, great. And uh, it's, it's getting chilly. It's getting chilly for a Floridian, okay? Um, but um, yeah, so make sure you sign up for the, the marriage retreat. It's gonna be February 17th and 18th, and we're looking forward to a great time together. Um, also, December 3rd, it's this Saturday, the Creation Museum Church Activity. If you're interested, then tonight is the night, okay? So after tonight, we've got to choose the church vehicle to take and make the arrangements and call ahead and all that stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're leaving from the church parking lot at 3 p.m. And then if we stay the whole time. job that she did and how much we appreciate her and then also we fill out the church directory some people have but we're wanting to give a church directory with the most updated information so please fill that out uh, find the letter okay of the first letter of your name so the letter on the page is the last name first letter is what you're looking for okay so my name's Morton I'm looking for the M and putting my name under the M okay um, just kind of having everything in order, so all we have to do is pretty much just input and print. So if you put it in alphabetical order, that would help us out a lot, okay? Um, and then, let's see, oh yes, okay, so the church business meeting is going to be coming up here soon in the third week of January, so please prayerfully consider if you are currently serving, if you'd like to serve again, if you're nominated, and then also be prayerfully considering uh, people to nominate for the different uh, church offices. You'll see the, the church Christmas card tables are set up with the box and the table, so please drop off any Christmas cards that you want to have passed out to the church family. Um, and then pray for the Fitzsimmons and the Nichols family. Um, Gary Fitzsimmons' sister, Becky Nichols, who we've been praying for for a while, has passed away, and her funeral is actually this Friday. It's going to be in Fort Wayne. Uh, please pray for our missionary, Rodney Fitzsimmons. He is going to be conducting the funeral. And he's asked prayer because there's going to be a lot of um, unsaved family members there. And so they want to get the gospel out and have some folks get saved at the funeral. A lot of people on our prayer list. I'll give you a couple, then we'll pray. Um, Bonnie Clark turned in her great-granddaughter, Macy, 
She is nine years old, and she is in Texas, and she has high blood pressure, and she's had three seizures. A little nine-year-old girl, Macy. Uh, so please keep her in your prayers. And then we have several updates. Continue to pray for Mrs. Henrici. She had the leg injury due to the, the wheelchair accident. Um, also pray for Jeree Shercliffe. That's Allen Cali Pointer's grandmother. She's in the hospital. Pray for Allie St. Villas' dad's mom with cancer. And then here's a couple updates for you. Um, we'll continue to pray for Sharon Warpel. She has pneumonia, and she's waiting. Very, very important test results. Both pointers have the flu, and that flu is definitely going around, so pray for everybody affected with that. And then Miss Ledbetter uh, is still dealing with that persistent cough, so pray for her. And um, there's so many other ones. Amanda Rueg's friend's dad with cancer, that's Mr. Ratcliffe, and so many others. We're going to pray for the offering, and then we'll continue with the service tonight. Dear Lord, we uh, thank you for the blessings that you bestow on the health that we can uh, work and provide for our families. Uh, we ask you to bless the offering as it's taken up as we give a small portion back to you that we can support the local ministry here in Lawrence, Indiana, as well as our missionaries around the world. Uh, we ask that you uh, use this to uh, your will so that we can see souls saved uh, and lives changed here in Lawrence continue to see Cornerstone grow and do your will. Uh, we ask your blessing now on the remainder of the service. Pastor Morton, bless him with the Holy Spirit this evening. Open up our hearts to what you would have for us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. hymnals once again to page 417 417 as we stand no one understands like jesus a good song to think about on a prayer service night no one understands page 417 no one understands like jesus he's a friend beyond compare
when you falter on the way. Though you fail him, sadly fail him, he will pardon you today. No one understands like Jesus when the days are dark and grim. No one is so near, so dear as Jesus. Cast your every care on him. Amen. Great singing tonight. And uh, you may be seated at this time. We'll have Pastor uh, come with a message. All right. Well, good evening once again. Welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church. And we're going to go ahead and continue with our study. Brother Sean reminded me of a month ago. Can you believe it's been that long? We've had the revival service and different things. And so we're going to continue on with this, the subject of predestination tonight. And I think a month later we should review, okay? So we're going to talk about predestination. And there's a lot of false ideas floating around about what predestination is. And a lot of the Reformed theologians... And Calvinists would say that that means that God foreknew who would be saved. And that's true. God is all-knowing. But he pre-selected and predetermined a select few to be saved. And the others he predetermined and pre-selected to go to hell. Doesn't matter if you have a desire to or not. If you're not in the predetermined, pre-selected few, then there's no hope for you. And I, I clearly think the Bible it teaches differently than that. And the biblical definition of predestination simply is God being all-knowing. And you do believe that God's all-knowing tonight? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we all understand that. God is all-knowing, and the God that is all-knowing sees future, and he knows who is saved and who will be saved. But nowhere in Scripture does he prohibit those that don't know, you and I, to give the gospel to every soul that he died for. That's every creature, and he actually commissioned his disciples who walked with him in his earthly ministry. At no point did he tell his disciples, all right, guys, don't go out evangelizing. Don't go out and only witness to the, uh, the elect, the elect, the predetermined few. Do you know why he didn't tell them that? Because his desire is that every soul hear the gospel and exercise the free will that they have to choose to either accept that gospel or reject that gospel for themselves. And that's what the Bible teaches. And we left off with Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Romans chapter 5, verse 9, we were uh, discussing and giving you some verses that I believe clearly teach counter to what the, those that believe in pre predestination, the Calvinist doctrine. And we gave, gave you several verses already. And I'll give you these just kind of rapid fire and give a brief explanation because I want to end up with the four most controversial passages on this subject in the Bible. There are four controversial passages that they would use as proof text in preaching and teaching predestination. And I want to get there. But Romans chapter 5, 9 says this. It says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Who's the we? Who's the we talking about? Is it just talking about Paul and the disciples and that's it? We shall be saved? No. We is anyone that professes faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the we. All right? And then Romans chapter 10, 13. Romans 10, 13 says for, what's the next word? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And whosoever simply means anyone for if anyone calls upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. It doesn't have any mention to some predetermined, pre-select few that make up God's elect. Titus 3.5. Titus 3.5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Salvation is for everyone, and these verses clearly define that and show that. It's for everyone that accepts Christ in salvation, which is the Father's will. 
Matthew 7, 21 goes on to say, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Let me ask you a question. What was the Father's will? What was the Father's will that Jesus Christ took upon himself a form of flesh, was born of the virgin, lived a perfect sinless life, went willingly to the cross of Calvary. What was the Father's will that he came to fulfill on the cross of Calvary? That everybody would be saved. That was his Father's will. And that is the will being referenced in Matthew 7, 21. And it's for everyone. Acts 4.12. Give you just a couple more. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And listen, if you're here tonight, I don't know everyone here personally. But if you're here tonight and you don't know for sure that you're saved, you can know that for sure. You can know that for sure. And the Bible lets you, you and I know clearly uh, what the Bible says about how to be saved. What are we talking about being saved? Saved from what? I asked a lady, are you 100% sure you're saved? And she said, absolutely. And I said, okay, I'm not trying to be nosy, but what makes you so sure you're saved? And she said, my dad pulled me from drowning out of our family pool when I was a young lady, young girl. People have a messed up idea of what salvation is. Salvation is not saving you from some physical peril. Salvation is when Jesus Christ saved us from an eternal separation from God in hell. That's what salvation is. And it's the, the biblical gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only Son of God who was perfect and sinless. He was the Son of God. He took upon himself the form of flesh, 100% God and 100% flesh. And he died for the sins of the world, past, present, future, so that you and I could choose freely to accept him as our Savior, place our faith and trust in him. And that's for everybody. Acts 16, Acts 16, verse number 30 and 31 says this, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Once again, we see here the disciples were witnessing to this man. And in no part of their response to his question, What do I need to do to be saved? You know what he didn't say? He didn't say this. If thou makest up the predestined few, or select elect, thou mayest believe. He didn't say that. You know what he said? If thou believest, thou may. If, if thou believest, thou shalt be saved in thy house. Here, I can give you so much more, but we'll just give you this one and then we'll move on. It says in um, Acts chapter 2, verses 36 to 41, the Bible says this. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Notice the next four words. They're up there. Nope. Uh, every one of you, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise of is unto you and to your children and to some. All right, is that what it says? No. And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with many other words that he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that were the predetermined, pre selected, few received his word and were baptized. Is that what it said? Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. I'm just here to try to encourage you. Read your Bible. Let the Bible be true and every man a liar. If what some man 
claims is going against Scripture, you always go with Scripture first. Let God be true and every man a liar. Don't drink the Calvinist Reformed theologian Kool-Aid. Trust the Bible and let the Bible be your source of God, uh, truth. Now, now we're gonna, we kind of went through that pretty quickly, but I want to get to this. Here's four main verses used by Calvinists to prove their doctrine. Four, here's the four proof texts that they like to use. Ephesians, go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And if you just read it and skimmed over it, you, you might could see where they're coming from. But that's why we're, we're encouraged to be students of the Word. Don't just take one part of a verse and go crazy with it. Take Scripture, compare other Scripture, and then, and then come to the truth. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says this, According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Well, see there. See there, Brother Morton? He's chosen us before the foundation of the world. That's his foreknowledge. He's predetermined who's going to be saved and who's going to go to hell. No, it does not. Now go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. The Bible says this, that he might present to himself a glorious, what's the next word? Church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be, what's the next word? Holy and without what? Blemish. That sounds to me a lot like the same wordage is being used in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. I mean, almost identical words being described. And you know what this verse doesn't describe? It doesn't describe a Savior in His foreknowledge handpicking people to go to heaven and handpicking, handpicking people to go to hell. What is the context talking about? What does He want? What is His desire of presenting to Himself that's spotless and blameless? A glorious what? Church. It's a church. It's the same exact wording, so it, it, you know it's going together. This part has nothing to do with a predetermined select group having the chance of salvation and the other chance, that other part not having a chance. It's talking about God foreordained. His foreordained purpose Christ had for his church was that it be holy and spotless. And that, that should be our desire is to have a church that Christ is pleased with. And that's what the context of the verse is talking about. Now here's another one. Actually, look at verse number 5. Ephesians chapter 1. That was verse 4. Now look at verse number 5. It says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now once you go back to the start of the verse, having predestined us. Ask yourself, who is the us? Who is he referring to? Who is the us? Was Paul literally saying to the church and saints at Ephesus, Hey everyone, the only people that make up the elect is me and the, and the disciples and the church, the saints at Ephesus. Is that what he was talking about? He said us. Is the us talking about himself, the disciples and the church that was at Ephesus? Salvation was only for us. Do you think that's what he was talking about? No, because in other places, he says it's for whosoever will. So either Paul is contradicting himself, which we know is not the case, or the us is a reference to anyone like Paul that would just express faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the adoption of children, God foreknew everything. And he had a purpose for mankind before the foundation of the world was laid. That mankind would be a part of his family. That was his plan. Go Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and 29. Romans chapter 8 verses 28 and 29. This is another proof text the Calvinists would take you to. To propagate their doctrine. 
Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among, among many brethren. Once again, let me, let me call your attention to the, the word called. Who are the called according to his purpose? And more specifically, what are those called, called to, specifically? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Who is the called, and what are they specifically called to? Look at that phrase that says, to them that love God. Let me ask you a question. If that is a reference to lost people getting saved, how many lost people do you know that love God the way they should? Who loves God? Who already has experienced the love of God in their life, and now they're being called to accomplish God's purpose and plan for their life? Is it the lost people in need of salvation, or, or is it those that have already experienced salvation and God's revealing His will for their lives now? God didn't call me to preach when I was lost. He called me to preach, had a, revealed His purpose for my life after I accomplished His first part of His plan for my life, and that was accepting Him as my personal Savior. Let me ask you a question. Oh, look at this phrase. Notice the next phrase. It said, uh, to them that love God did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. To the image of his son. Okay, foreknowledge has different elements to it. God knows everything, and since he knows everything, he knows every soul that will be saved. So we know that. But let me ask you a question. Do all saved people live for God like they should? Do all saved people live holy lives like they should? Do all saved people reflect the image of Christ the way they should? No. So the called are, in fact, those that have experienced salvation. But what is he calling them to? To reflect the image of his son. Conforming to Christ's image is a lifetime endeavor. Nobody here is perfect Nobody here is perfectly reflecting that image at all times. It's a lifelong pursuit. Now, the indwelling Spirit of God comes in and moves and dwells our life when we get saved. But then after, after the Holy Spirit moves in and dwells us, do we have the opportunity to be what we need to be? Without the Holy Spirit, we talked about that Sunday. I'm not going to re-preach the message. But without the Holy Spirit... None of us in here are capable of doing what Christ expects us to do. Trying to live holy in the flesh will only get you so far. It's going to take the indwelling spirit that you and I received only after we accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. Are we going to hopefully uh, begin to be obedient to him and yield ourselves to him and then he shows us how we're going to reflect his image? But let me, let me show you something else, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up, and then we'll take some time for prayer. God's divine purpose and plan is for everyone to be saved, and then his plan for them at that point is to reflect his image. Now, go to the third one is this. John chapter 15, verse 16. And I kind of wanted to get here, and we're going to end with this uh, thought. John 15, 16 says this. This is another verse that the Calvinist would take you to as proof text. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it you. See there, you haven't chosen me, I have chosen you. That's proof that God against our will has chosen some to heaven and some to hell. You haven't chosen me, I've chosen you. Okay, this is, this is a pretty easy one. We're not going to spend too much time on this. What has he chosen us for? What's the context say? Look in your Bible and, show me, and tell me. Ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and do what? 
bring forth fruit. Do you know what that, that's simply all it's talking about? God, a part of his preordained purpose for our life, a life of anyone who accepts him as Savior, is that they be fruitful as a Christian. Doesn't that make sense that Christ, who, who died for us to, to make us a new creature and give us a fresh start, expects us to be fruitful for him? I think so. He, his purpose, his preordained purpose for our life is that we bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That who, whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. This, see, ye have not chosen me. This verse disproves man's free will. And proves that God has, in fact, predestined people against their will to heaven or hell. Nope, it's false. Christians are saved, but God's plan for a saved person's life is to live a fruitful, abundant Christian life. And then we'll stop right there. We'll pick it up uh, next Wednesday. But listen, please don't get mixed up with the, the false views of predestination. And read your Bible. Read your Bible. And let God be true and every man a liar. Predestination is not God against man's will selecting some to heaven and some to hell. But instead, it's God being foreknowing, has a purpose and a plan for everything that he does. He died and made it possible for you and I to be saved if we will just come to him in faith and repentance toward God trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, turning from whatever it was that we were trusting in. What are some things that people trust in that should be repented of? A lot of people trust in their finances. A lot of people trust in, I will give enough money to charity, and that will gain me access into heaven one day. The Bible says, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Some people trust in the fact that they are a good citizen, a good person, a good parent, a good child growing up. And that's got to mean something. It does. It means you're a, you're, you're a good citizen and a good child and a good spouse and a good partner. But there's, no, there's none good enough to merit heaven, to merit eternal life. God's purpose and plan for your life before the foundation of the world is that you would accept his son as your savior. And when you hear the gospel and you reject that, you are rejecting God's eternal plan for your life. And you would be a whole lot better off if you just accept him by faith as your personal savior. Now, let me have every head battery I close and we'll just uh, give you time to think about what you talked about, what we talked about tonight. There may be somebody here that's with us and Maybe some of this is foreign to you. Maybe you've, you've never heard about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that came to earth and what was flesh, became flesh, and went to the cross. He went to the cross. Why would a man named Jesus go to the cross? Well, Jesus, in fulfilling his Father's plan and bringing salvation to you and I, the world today, we're sinners. We've broken God's law. We, we're, we're lawbreakers in a holy, righteous God's eyes. We've sinned. We've messed up. And God has to be just concerning sin. He loves us. He doesn't want, it's not his will that any should perish, but all that come to repentance. But he's got to be just and true to, to his punishment towards sin. So how are the two sides reconciled? God has to have a sacrifice to pay for those sins so he can be just. None of us are perfect to sacrifice ourselves. Jesus Christ was perfect. And Jesus, giving himself as a sacrifice, paid for our sins completely. Well, Pastor Morton, how do I get to heaven? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in me should not perish but have everlasting life. Place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Trust in him and him alone to get you to heaven. I wonder tonight, I know it's a Wednesday, I know it's a Wednesday, but I wonder if there's somebody here the Holy Spirit's been speaking to and saying, you know what, you haven't been saved. 
You need to be saved. Maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to your heart about that. Would you allow me to pray for you tonight? I can't get saved for you. If I could get saved and, and, and send you to heaven, I would, but I can't. Something that you personally have to do for yourself tonight. And I wonder today when nobody's looking around, we're not trying to embarrass anybody. We want to help you if we can. Say, Pastor Morton, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know that I'm going to heaven. I don't know if I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. But I want to know. I've got some questions about that. I wonder if you would just slip your hand up. I don't, I don't know everybody's name in here, but I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you by face. If I could pray that the Lord would give you the, the answers, give you the, the courage to, to take a step of faith and ask someone for help. We all had to ask for help one day. We asked somebody to take the Bible and share with us how we could be saved, and they did. I'm thankful for that. Say, Pastor Morton, I don't know if I'm saved. Would you raise your hand and let me pray for you? Anybody like that tonight? Anybody at all? I'd love to pray for you. All right, well, God bless you. We're going to go ahead and, all right, God bless you. God bless you. Say, Pastor Morton, I've got some family members of mine that I have a burden for, I have a heart for, that they get back in church, that they do what's right, that they start living for the Lord. Maybe you have family members that you know that need to be saved. Would you let me pray for them too? I don't, I don't know their name, but I'd like to pray for your family members that need some help. Anybody like that here tonight? God bless you. God bless you. All right. If I could have the musicians come forward, I just felt led that we're going to have an invitation tonight. I'm going to have the musicians come forward, and we don't have somebody lead us in a song per se, but we're going to have the music play. And I want, I want us to do this. When the first note of the piano is played tonight, that person that raised their hand that needed some help, had some, had some questions, I want you to do this. Church people are, are praying for you. Church people are wanting you to experience the joy, the peace that comes with knowing Christ as your Savior. And they can take, they can take God's Word. They can take the Bible and show you what God Himself says one must do to be saved. And in just a few moments... They could take God's word and show you how to be saved. Have peace that passes all understanding. No more fear, no more concern about where you're going to spend eternity. You can know that you know that you know that you're saved. Would you allow somebody to take God's word and share it with you how to be saved? If you're a lady, we have my wife here in the front. My wife Leah can take the scripture and show you how to be saved. If you're a man in here tonight, I can take God's word. I'll come down here. I'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. Would you allow us to do that for you tonight? As we sing, if God's spoken to your heart, would you come forward? Come forward, and we'll take you by the hand, and we'll help you, give you the questions and the answers to your questions. If you could stand to your feet tonight, please stand to your feet. We'll have a moment of invitation. If God's spoken to your heart, if God's spoken to your heart at all, would you please come and ask somebody for some help? one more verse man this Christmas time a lot of people are going to be gathered around for Christmas time and they're going to think Christmas is all about presents and all about meals but we know the real reason of the season is Jesus Christ Jesus Christ coming being born of a Virgin Mary living a perfect life and dying being buried and rising again from the dead why don't we as Christians use this opportunity to get the gospel out to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Would you come? This will be the last verse, and then we'll conclude the service tonight. If God's spoken to your heart, please, please come forward.
right, thank you so much for being here tonight, and we're so happy to have our visitors. Uh, Levon's not here, but we have somebody from his neck of the woods. We have this brother here from, uh, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? And he knows where Charlotte, Michigan is. How about that? So we're so glad to have you, sir, and uh, we pray that the Lord keeps you safe on your work. And then we have uh, Sade. Sade here, she took a school tour. Uh, she's interested in our school. Uh, she has three children, and... Um, five nine years old and 13 right and so we're we're praying for them for god's will and make sure you come by and, and greet our visitors and uh let them know we're glad to have them here tonight and we're so happy to have miss sharon's miss sharon's sister and then brother-in-law um, brother sonny and then what's your name again i'm sorry karen brother sonny and karen make sure you uh, welcome them and just make them feel welcome tonight all right well uh make sure we keep some of these folks in our prayers as well we have Bonnie Clark's great-granddaughter, Macy, the little nine-year-old girl that's had three seizures and high blood pressure. And I didn't want to leave this one out. I, I forgot this one earlier. Marty Thompson has COVID again, and so please keep him in your prayers. And then also the entire Clark family, Jason, Christine, Jim, Janet, the whole family that came, um, I guess they brought some type of stomach bug up with them from Florida. They're all sick, and so... On top of everything else the Clark family's dealing with, they've got some type of nasty virus bug going on, so pray for them. And then uh, Donna Robertson, that is um, Mrs. Ledbetter's sister, she is home now, so that's an update, that's a positive update. So she's home now. Pray for Miss Shake. Miss Shake has the flu, and she sounds like she could sing bass in the choir. So please keep her in your prayers and uh, so many others. And uh, so good to see Tammy Lloyd back with us and feeling better. And we'll go ahead and pray and be dismissed. God bless you. Be safe going home. And Lord willing, we'll see you sun actually Saturday for the church activity and then Sunday at 10 a.m. for church, okay? So let's go ahead and be dismissed in prayer. And um, we'll go ahead and be dismissed. Dear Father, thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for just a simple study in your word tonight about predestination, what it is not and what it is. I pray that you would just... Um, bring confidence about what we believe and uh, encouragement where we need it, Lord. There's so many people that are going through pain and hurt. The Williams family is dealing with the loss of Shirley. And we think about the, the Nichols family and Fitzsimmons family dealing with the funeral coming up. I pray that you would be with every person, Lord, every widow that's lost their spouse, every parent that has sick children. Can't even imagine this young father uh, Brother Scroggum, that's got cancer, he's got little children, Lord, I pray that you be with them. I pray you bring comfort where it's needed, bring strength and encouragement. I pray that the family would be supportive and strong for each other. And Lord, I pray that our church family would just embrace those in our own flock that's hurting. I pray that for Mr. Scroggum, that he has a church family that he can rely on and depend upon. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us to lift up these people in our prayers. So many people that are sick and hurting. I pray you be with them, heal them, Lord, if it be your will. And Lord, I pray you help us be safe as we go home tonight. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, God bless you. Have a great night.